The Asian American Pacific Islander Nurses Association of Nevada presents Healthy Mondays with Apina of Nevada. Start the week healthy and right with interesting conversations on living a healthy lifestyle. And now, your Healthy Mondays host, Dr. Mary Faye Axon Armstrong. Hey, aloha! Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Good evening. Maraming salamat po sa patuloy niyong pakikinig sa aming programa. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm yours truly, Dr. Mary Faye Axon Armstrong, founding president of Alpino of Nevada and professor at Roseman University College of Nursing. And I have with me my niece Ashley Axon, all the way from Portland, Oregon, right? To help me celebrate women. Welcome, Ashley. Hi, thank you for having me. Welcome, uh, all our listener, listeners out there. Welcome on a Monday night segment. So tonight, we are going to celebrate women. In two days on Wednesday, September uh, 30th, is National Women's Health and Fitness. Sorry, men. Tonight, we are giving tribute to women. You and me, Ashley. So <laughs> <laughs> this annual observance aims to focus attention on the importance of regular physical activity and health awareness for women. Promote the largest event for women's health of all ages. And I'm just going to read this little uh, segment that I saw on the website that across the country, an estimated 80,000 to 100,000 women of all ages gather at local health and fitness events. And they join in groups large and small. And from senior centers to hospitals, parks, and health clubs, women of all fitness levels encourage each other to begin or continue a healthy journey. And often, these journeys only require the support of like-minded people. And the days inspires many forms of exercise and supplies in informational seminars and clinics too. Uh, screenings to provide a way to track our fitness levels and help us get back on track. So forming small groups help to create a daily routine or simply keep keep us responsible for our commitments to ourselves. So really developing our physical strength along with mental confidence uh, goes a long way to keeping our bodies healthy. So many of us overlook the rest that we need and healthy foods our bodies need to fuel our days. So when we take a moment uh, to learn uh, the best ways to care for ourselves, we then can often take better care of others. So Ashley is going to share with us her role in how to help women to stay healthy and fit. Maybe you can talk about what you're doing nowadays. Yeah, so right now, I mean, I work full time, I'm a mom, and so I understand how busy life can get when you're trying to take care of yourself, take care of your family, and, you know, trying to take care of your health and fitness at the same time. Um, I will say the way that I do it, uh, I, I teach a, a few different facets of fitness. I teach yoga, that was my first love. Um, I teach cycling classes, as well as some circuit training or weightlifting um, intertwined with cardio. But I will say it takes a little bit of everything across the board, um, including nutrition, sleep, rest, and recovery to really have a um, kind of holistic lifestyle. So in order to take care of everything there, it's also the mental aspect. And I do feel like yoga um, with a little bit of higher intensity training helps people find the foundation for that. And so with my clients, I always try to, you know, start them off small, build the foundation, but always trying to help them understand why they're doing it. And most uh, oftentimes it's definitely because they want to spend more time with their kids or they want to be around long enough to meet their grandkids. And so it's figuring out your reason why you're doing it and then starting off small, building that strong foundation, then building the bricks from there. Yeah, thank you for sharing uh, things that activities that you do with women. And of course, uh, you probably have not only women in your, in your uh, facility, right? Well, tonight we're gonna to focus on women. So because it's National Women's Health and Fitness Day on September 30th. And as I said earlier, um, the focus in the, is the, in the importance of regular physical activity and health awareness for women. And um, I'm looking here, activities such as walking events, health screenings and workshops, and exercise demonstrations uh, will take place. So at the end of our uh, broadcast today, like we did with the National Yoga Awareness, um, 
month that I uh, actually did a, a yoga, uh, a basic yoga exercise for us. She's going to do something at the end. So wait, stay tuned for that. So how do we observe uh, National Women's Health and Fitness Day? According to the literature out there, uh, to celebrate the day, um, you can start searching for an event happening in your area and participating in it. And so uh, you can also host one if you want. But one of the things that they uh, gave like few ideas are trying a sport that you haven't played before. Um, oh, there are so many of them that I haven't played before. <laughs> so what are, what are the basic things that I have done before? Volleyball. Maybe I wanted to do... Uh, Bungee jumping, is that considered a sport? That's an <laughs> recreational sport, but it's a sport. <laughs> it's gonna bring up your adrenaline, right? Exactly. <laughs> and work out with a friend. Actually, I'm gonna tell a, a story. Uh, Saturday, I was like, I need to do get out of the house. And it just so happened that um, there is a park like close by my work. And uh, there's, I think it's Whitney Ranch. And there's different ways to go up there in that um, crater right there. You can go hiking at the bottom and go up. And just so happen where our work is that uh, the, the top of that crater is right behind our campus. So I cheated and I drove on campus, parked my car in the parking lot, but I walked. And they even, you know, went on live for Facebook to show them, here I am <laughs> exercising. And I'm, I was by myself and it's okay because it's a safe area. So one of the things you can do is work out with a friend. It's always easier for to do something with someone rather than being alone, right? Oh, yes. A lot easier. I mean, it's, I think it's the... Uh not only the support, but the accountability. <laughs> you know, when you're working out by yourself, it's like, oh, I was supposed to do 12 reps, but no one's here, so I'm gonna do 10, or, oh, it was almost an hour that I worked out for, it doesn't count. But if you have someone there, it's like, no, you said you're gonna do this, so let's do it. <laughs> yes, that accountability, you're so right about that. The other idea is walk or ride your bike somewhere instead of using a vehicle. I didn't do that last Saturday. But. <laughs> And then one is trying out a healthy food you've never eaten or a new healthy recipe. You know, mm. It's always now easy with our uh, advanced technology. It's now easy to share recipes on Facebook or even Instagram. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. And, so, go ahead. <laughs> oh, and on Pinterest, there's so many different things uh, on there. There's a lot of, uh, just there's just so much resources. Yeah, just like you were saying. Yes. And then, you know, I'm very strong advocate of mind, body, and spirit. So with your body and then with your spirit and with your emotional needs, uh, one of the things that the idea here is schedule a checkup with your doctor. That's also one way that you can keep yourself healthy, all you women out there. Set health and fitness goals for yourself and make sure you have been drinking enough fluid, especially now. It's 100 what? It's still in the hundreds over here in Las Vegas. How is it there in Oregon? How's the weather there? It's like 85 and we're dying. <laughs> My air condition's going right now. I wouldn't survive in Vegas. I'm very much ready for fall. <laughs> I know. I'm getting used to it now here. Um, it's a different kind of heat. Um, un unlike in Hawaii, you know, oh, it, yeah. when it gets really hot, it's scary, humid, and we're not, you're not used to the temperature anymore. And I think when I visit last time, as soon as we got out of the airport, it's just like, I feel like melting. I know, you feel like you're walking in water. <laughs> the humidity, yes, the humidity. So uh, tell us what is your day in the life um, helping women to stay healthy and fit? Oh, man. So I, man, I love going to work. I meet so many strong and amazing women every day. People that I work with, people who are my clients. Um, but day to day, I meet different types of women. Some of them are stay at home moms. A lot of, a lot of uh, my clients are stay at home moms or are moms in general. And the number one thing that always comes up is I don't, I don't have the time. I just don't have the time. And, um, and so it's figuring out prioritizing time and like why they're doing this. A lot of times when they first start off, they don't have the time because it's not a priority. They've never hit 
something in their life that became a roadblock to them wanting to get fit. And then you have women who are a little older who are moms and grandparents and all of a sudden they were diagnosed with type two diabetes or they had a heart attack or someone in their family fell ill and it takes this huge thing, negative thing, in order to want them to flip around and find that time and prioritize working out. Once they find that reason why though, the amount of energy and effort that goes into it is amazing. So I see women who work 40, 50 hours a week, who are DAs, who are lawyers, who are, or who are stay-at-home moms who, have, who don't get to stop working. They know that it is important. And that's why these women are so successful. And that's why these women are such loving and amazing people, because they've realized that you have to put yourself first. You have to fill your own cups up before you give to your friends and your family. Um, and so that's just what I've seen mostly from day to day. Yeah, take a time out. I mean, I, as you were talking about those busy women, uh, and I'm one of them. So uh, I think <laughs> I had to have a wake up call you know, when people around you are having heart attacks and stroke, and I have, I know a couple of people already who are um, in the academia teaching in the nursing program who had um, stroke and had some residuals, and it was a wake up call. And uh, what a wake up call, because when you're still young and you have the heart attack and stroke, it just tells you, your body is trying to tell you that you need to slow down. So women usually, and, and a lot of times, the symptoms for the heart attack for women is so different. You know, it's like a heartburn, and then we just say, oh, you know, maybe I'm just tired, or maybe, you know, I just had too much caffeine uh, when, when I had some uh, palpitations, you know, and uh, just so happened, and thank goodness, thank God that it is had to do with thyroid, my thyroid, rather than cardiac, but it could have been cardiac. So women out there, please take good care of yourself. You know, Wednesday, next Wednesday is going to be a special day for us, dedicated by the Department of Health and Human Services to be the National Women's Health and Fitness Day, because uh, don't wait for the wake up call before you take care of yourself. So maybe um, I'm looking at the ideas here and one of my favorite is taking a nap. <laughs> it says you need to take a nap and I think you know, with my age, it's just my body tells me like, I just need to lay down and I just would just take a nap. You know, sometimes I meant to just take a nap for 30 minutes and then it becomes an hour. So lately it's, it's been lo getting longer and longer, but it is necessary because when you're, you're sleeping at night, all your cells are, um, are doing its thing, um, doing all of the, uh, the, um, for your cells to, to rejuvenate, you know, because um, everything is at rest. And so all of your vitamins, minerals are all moving along and um, rejuvenating you, your, your brain, your heart, all the organs. So you, need, you do need to take a nap, um, cat nap as we call it, right? Yes. So hard when you have little ones. Oh, I know. <laughs> but it's like, it's always, you know, when you, I, I, I trade it out sometimes with meditation. I think meditations and naps are very, they're very, they're very equal to me. Um, and if I only have 10 minutes and sometimes I'll revert to meditation, but it's like, you know, when you don't have time to sleep or meditate, that's kind of when you need it the most. <laughs> so just stopping and taking a breath. Yes. Yeah. We have a, a really excellent body to tell us when we need rest, because sometimes, you know, uh, you just want to keep going, going, and then my eyes are just closing. It's like, okay, time to take a nap. My body is telling me to uh, t take a nap. The other one of my favorite on the list is getting a massage. <laughs> oh, yes, I have one scheduled next week. <laughs> yes, I need to get one. And I think, you know, sometimes, you know, you get stiff. And uh, sometimes uh, just massaging myself sometimes while driving in a red red uh, red light, a stop light sign. And then I would just start doing this on myself. So I think that uh, getting a professional massage, it really helps. It opens up all your uh, lymphatic um, system, you know, all the lymphatic system, it wakes up if there's clogging in there, then it wakes up. So tell me more about your experience at your work. Um, what, are, what are the things that your clients usually prefer? 
when they do their exercise or whatever form of exercise that yeah, so I have two types of clients usually. One is the uh, only will do yoga people, and that's totally fine. If that's where you are, that's I, I will meet you there. Um, but I have a few clients who only will do yoga, and they are very uh, they are very disciplined. They show up every morning, seven a.m. Monday through Friday, to get to their mat, and they. It seems like, at least to me, I only see them at the studio, that they're living a very healthy lifestyle. Their yoga practice has extended off of their mat um, after just a few months of doing yoga. Now their nutrition is better. Their discipline is better. Their self-care is better. Their relationships with their family are better. But it's because they um, get to their mat and do yoga. And just like how you were talking about uh, massage and rest, sometimes yoga can be a bit of a form of like self-massage. The poses definitely help. Um lymph and hormones especially for women oh my gosh yoga helps so much with hormones i could go on and on about that but then the, on the other hand i have women who they need that high intensity high heart rate workouts and they come in and they still recover with yoga but they need to come in and they need to sweat and that is their meditation that is their uh rest and recharge um but they also do know that they need to recover very well. They need to do an Epsom salt bath or they need to chug water after they're done working out. Make sure that, especially for a woman, making sure your protein intake is high enough, um, especially if you're very active. Those are the things that I've noticed people uh, struggle with or don't realize. Like if you're working out a ton, you need to make sure you're eating a lot. And in today's society, I don't think there are many people telling women you need to eat more. But if anyone needs a reminder, eat, <laughs> your body needs it. <laughs> Yes, and also um, as you were talking about eating more, right now with the uh, COVID nineteen global pandemic, it's we're not we don't have the freedom now to go out with our girlfriends to go and eat out. Yes, I remember you know my a uh, lot of friends in Hawaii that you know oh, you know um, are you available on the weekend? And then we just all last minute last minute planning sometimes work. Yeah. You know, I'll meet you there. You know, we'll just have lunch there. And it's funny because sometimes two of my friends back in Hawaii, we don't talk about what we're going to wear, but I just posted it on Facebook. And every time that we wanted to go lunch or dinner, we just happened to wear the same things, like the color coding. So the mind, you know, you're connecting with your friends. And I think the mind, body, and spirit is very important to keep in mind that all three of this is part of your being as a person. You cannot separate it. Yeah. So one of the things that um, I think you helped us last time that you were our guest um, for the National Yoga Awareness Month is learning about incorporating mindfulness into your daily life. And it's very, very simple. I mean, you can, uh, can you share with us like one, just, just, uh, saying it verbally, what could be considered a mindfulness exercise? Really simple, like early in the morning after you wake up. Early in the morning, I think the simplest mindfulness exercise I always tell this to people is something that we do every day and that's just to breathe um, and be mindful about it. It's a natural reaction in our body. We do it, I don't, I don't know how many times a day we do it, but I know we do it a lot because we're, we're still alive, we're still conscious. So make it mindful uh, take your when you take your awareness to your breath actually picture that breath coming into your body and notice where it's traveling and when you exhale actively allow any stresses anything that it catches on to within your body to leave it's just it's a way of flushing things out your breath is there not only to rejuvenate and replenish but it's also to get rid of things that are toxic that we don't need whether that's physically or mentally or spiritually Yes, and I think I wanted to add, as a nurse, um, every time that I teach my patient in the hospital before they get discharged, especially those who have been admitted for pneumonia, you know, uh, we all have excess fluids um, sometimes sitting in our lungs. If we're just sitting there and breathing like this, you need to do deep breathings once in a while because our lungs are just like two trees like this with branches. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we inhale, exhale, we have our um, oxygen carrying blood that carries the, the blood into the lungs and the heart. And sometimes um, our lungs and, and heart are not working properly. And when we deep breathe, 
it allows your body to get rid of that excess fluid. Because if you're just sitting there, so if normally when you just had surgery in the hospital, they give you what they call an incentive spirometer. And what it does, it helps you to open up your alveoli. So we had this kind of like little balloons in the deep of our lungs that's actually responsible for exchange, exchanging carbon dioxide and oxygen. So if we're just breathing like this, then we are not uh, doing the full capacity of our lungs uh, system to get rid of that extra fluids. And what happened is that fluids just sit in your lungs and then eventually it grows bacteria. And then there you have it, you have your pneumonia. So again, you know, deep breathing, exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. And then it also gives you more oxygen supply into the rest of your body. So um, one of the things here in the literature that I'm reading and how to observe the women's health and fitness day is to, uh, again, I mentioned joining a walking group or another exercise forum, visit a clinic seminar on portion sizes. What does that mean? <laughs> Portion sizes. Oh my God, this actually really funny story that just came up today. Um, my coworker, she was like, Hey, do you want a coffee from Starbucks? That's my kryptonite. I was like, yeah, I'll have a coffee from Starbucks. And I went on and looked at the nutrition facts and a grande, I think is their medium. And for this certain drink, it was 250 calories and so much sugar. And I was like, Oh my God, that's insane. And she was like, well, how much is a tall? And the tall is just one size smaller. Like it doesn't look like a ton. It was literally half the amount of sugar, half the amount of calories. And so I was like, you know what? I'll let myself indulge today. Um, I haven't had a coffee drink like that in a while. So go ahead. That's it's not as bad as the grande. So it was, you can still indulge. You don't have to get rid of the foods you don't let you love. You just have to portion control. Um, and it's always just eating. I, I always like to tell people who are looking for a little bit of advice is intuitive eating. Um, I, I personally do count my calories, but that's also because I count it by how much I'm expending, not because I want to restrict. Um, but just making sure that you're eating till well, you're satisfied. You don't, um, someone told me one time, you don't need to look at your plate and think of it as a mission or a competition. You don't need to clear the entire plate and kitchen in one sitting. That's not our goal. Our goal is to replenish and nourish our body. So if you eat till you're about 80% full, wait 20 minutes, chances are you'll feel very satisfied. And so it's making sure that you're portioning out portions for your body based off of your macros or your calories or however you count um, that are good for your height, your weight, your age, your activity level, and certain goals that you are trying to achieve. Yes, and also read the labels. You know, I when I go grocery shopping or when, when I have to choose, like sometimes, you know, free lunches at work and sometimes they are portions. And then I look at it. And, and buffet, I think I had a couple of years ago when I still have my radio show in Hawaii, I had a nutritionist and a diabetes nurse educator. And we talked about uh, scanning the food items first in a buffet. Yeah, actually put anything on your plate. And I think that's what it talks about portioning the sizes, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember my mom telling me that, uh, <laughs> rest in peace, mom. <laughs> but she was telling me that uh, whatever my children doesn't finish, like we're in a party or family gathering, that I'm supposed to finish what they don't finish on their plate. And I said, no way. <laughs> Have you had that? I think Filipino families, yes, you no know. She uh, me for all the weight she gained. <laughs> I, I'm not, I refuse to <laughs> finish their food. They will, you know, so what I do is just get what you can eat, you know, yeah. for the kids. I guess the kids, you know, just get what you can eat because I'm not going to eat their leftovers. <laughs> exactly. yeah. I can yeah. only handle so much mac and cheese. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And then I, um, one of the things here, uh, also joining a meditation or prayer session and actually one of the things that's the spiritual part of it you know uh all of us has believe in different things and then your faith and i i join our women's bible study at my church and we finish a uh, precept with uh um i forgot which one we did uh philemon and then i we're starting the esther um, Bible study. And I think those are the things that some of the things that you can do to join a prayer session or Bible study. 
Another one that's very important, and you know, September is also Suicide Prevention Month. And I'm hoping that I will have a special guest um, who's gonna be talking about that, but that's another segment. But this one is just uh, mentioning about attending a webinar about reducing stress. And I think you mentioned about yoga, mindfulness, um, taking a nap can also reduce stress because then you're allowing your body to um, to just relax and forget about that stressor that you have. Yes. So um, anything else that you wanted to uh, share about how to reduce the stress? How to reduce stress? <laughs> well, <laughs> definitely. I, I, Of course, I'm a huge advocate of yoga and meditation. I try to meditate as much as humanly possible. Uh, I just did a two hour one uh, a few days ago and you just feel so rejuvenated after. Um, and I think it's a really great way because you have to sit there and be not trapped in your own body, but you have to listen to everything that your body's telling you for those two hours. And so you get to notice little things uh, stressors or tensions that you were still holding on to that maybe served that came about months ago that you've just never addressed because you didn't have the time to. And so I think meditation and yoga really helps you listen to your body and realize what your body is actually actively trying to tell you, whether that's through muscle aches, whether that's through um, like symptoms of being sick or illness. Uh, I think that's a really good way to reduce stress. Another way that I think is a great way to reduce stress is the complete opposite. Like, go on a run, be active. If there's some heat and fire in your body that you need to burn off, go for a run, burn it off, torch the calories and all the negativity with it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the United States Department of Health and Human Resources have a website uh, for resources for women. It's called Office and Women's Health and it's uh, womenshealth.gov. So there's a uh, Office of Women's Health Helpline, which is 1-800-994-9662. The number again is 1-800-994-9662. This is the Office on Women's Health, and um, it is provided by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. So it says here 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday to Friday. So uh, the Office of Women's Health and Office of Women's Health Helpline, they do not see patients and are unable to diagnose your medical condition. They're, if they're not able to provide treatment, but they'll be able to refer you to the resources in your area. And if anything else, if no one is uh, answering, then and if it's an emergency, then you need to call 911. So that's one of the resources for, for the women in celebration for National Women's Health and Fitness Day. So I think we're, uh, time flies when we're having fun, Ashley. <laughs> so I think then you can do a, a short uh, a sample of what they can do as exercise, yes. Absolutely, so um, I'll, I was just have just thinking about it, just a little bit of uh, mindfulness and um, some of my favorite core exercises uh, to do in bed. I'm, I'm sitting in my bed as we're speaking right now. And uh, these are just things that I do in the morning on the weekends just to get my day going. It builds a little bit of heat and fire, what we call prana in yoga within your body in order to energize you, get the blood flowing, get oxygen flowing through your body um, early on in the day. You can do it in the evening. It's not it's not energizing at all, but it definitely um, warms up the core. And you know we need the core strength for everything. Um, but so you can do that uh, sitting down wherever you are. I'm going to move this a little bit here. So um, you can be sitting down onto your bed and bring one leg out extended. So I have one leg out and one foot in my uh, close to the inner part of my thigh. And you're just going to reach the arms up overhead and turn and twist to face the foot and fold over here. And once you allow your head to bow down, just begin to take your awareness to your breath and start to slowly elongate each inhale and each exhale, feeling the breath flow through the body. And take a few rounds of breath here. And just inhale, slowly roll up. And from here, you're gonna reach the left arm up overhead and find a side body stretch. This is gonna activate the left side body. Maybe work your gaze up, make a gentle stretch here. And stay here for a few rounds of breath. 
Then once you've kind of warmed up the spine here and warmed up the body, you would repeat this on the other side. And then if you're at home listening, you can make your way onto your back. Once you come onto your back, bring the feet together about hip width distance apart as close as you can to the hips and place your hands to the side of your hips and just press the hips up here. Once you press the hips up, really relax the glutes and engage the core, pressing the palms into the bed gently. This is really great if you're having any PMS pain or stress, back pain, and just hang out here for a few rounds of breath. And slowly lower it down. From here, I like to bring my knees out wide into what's called Supta Baddha Konasana, or cobbler's pose, bound angle pose, and squeeze the soles of the feet together. From here, you're gonna interlace all 10 fingers behind your head. Keep the elbows out nice and wide. Inhale while your head is still flat on the ground, and exhale, breath, peel the head, neck, and chest up, engaging the core, contracting the abdominals. If you wanna make sure what's feeling engaged, you can take three fingers, send it right in the center, especially any moms who are dealing with diastasis recti or abdominal separation. It's always nice to tangibly feel what muscles are working. Just hold it here. Inhale, breath helps you lower down. Exhale, breath helps you lift right back up. And notice how I'm leading with my chest and not the elbows. And a lot of people like to crunch the elbows in. Keep them out nice and wide so you have a lot of space here. Then inhale, lower down. Exhale, lift back up a few more times until you feel that nice, tingly, warm sensation in the core. And then from here, you can bring the legs up to tabletop, flex the toes and towards the shins. Hands come off to the side and just peel the head, neck, and chest up, creating a hollow body hold. This again will warm up the core just a little bit. And continue to keep the chin off the chest, lifting up and always leading with the heart. So my shoulders are off the ground a few inches here. And I'll hold here for anywhere for five to 10 breaths until I feel that my core is nice and engaged. And from there, lower down. And from here, just getting a nice twist in to close off the practice is always nice. So allowing the legs to fall heavy to one side. Both shoulders are firmly planted on the mat. And then take your gaze over one arm, maybe closing your eyes. And this is the time where it really is always nice to spend a few extra rounds of breath, really softening into the pose and then bringing the knees back through center and then doing it over to the opposite side. Spinal twists are always good to help with hormonal imbalances, any types of stress. Twists in the body definitely help with um, detoxification processes as well. And then when you're ready, we lay here in Shavasana or your corpse pose, just letting the arms and legs fall out wide and closing your eyes here. Once you come to your Shavasana or corpse pose, Lay here from anywhere from three to 10 minutes, as much time as you need. And that's the time that your body is actually really um, absorbing all the energy and the intentions that you've set, the benefits, uh, spiritual and mental benefits of having a yoga practice. So if you're at home, stay in your Shavasana, hang out there. And if you fall asleep, it's okay. I'm sure your kids will wake you up. Thank you, Ashley. Well, you know, it looks easy enough to follow and do. So women out there, you know, that's a good start. And make sure to take time out for yourself, to take care of yourself. Don't wait for that wake-up call that I was talking about. Don't wait until you feel like you're going to have a heart attack or a stroke. So um, take good care of yourself. Happy National Women's Health and Fitness Day. Thank you, Ashley, again for uh, sharing your expertise and for uh, sharing what, what are the things that our women out there can do to take care of themselves. Well, time flies when we're having fun. So remember, our listeners out there, thank you again, Ashley, and thank you, PHLB Radio, for being our, our dedicated and loyal partner to bring all this uh, important information to our listeners to keep them healthy. So remember, listeners out there, every Monday is a healthy Monday. Aloha. The Asian American Pacific Islander Nurses Association of Nevada has just brought you Healthy Mondays with Apina of Nevada.